Thank you again for joining us for this information session. This session will discuss the online and part-time graduate programs in electrical and computer engineering at Johns Hopkins University. My name is Cheryl Williams, and I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Marketing for the Whiting School of Engineering. With me tonight is our chair, Dr. Brian Jennison. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, so just to give you some highlights about uh, the ECE program, uh, we do offer a master's degree as well as two certificate options that I will describe in an uh, upcoming slide. For the master's degree, um, 10 courses, graduate level courses, need to be completed within five years, and uh, some students uh, can actually complete the degree in, in two to three years if they are able to uh, take courses in fall, spring, and summer semesters, as well as um, if they're able to, uh, to accommodate it, uh, take more than one course per semester. Um, the curriculum is, uh, we, we are proud that it's both broad and deep with over 80 courses. Those courses uh, span seven different focus areas that I will describe in an upcoming slide, but provide a broad range of uh, focus areas in um, many, um, if not all, the core electrical and computer engineering areas. And as Cheryl had previously mentioned, uh, the curriculum is is quite rigorous, but but uh, because of that, it's it's rewarding, and uh, uh, students uh, definitely are uh, benefit from the the coursework and the expertise of our instructors. Courses are available both online and on-site, and the on-site courses are offered at the Applied Physics Laboratory campus in Laurel, Maryland. And one of the unique features about ECE is um, the, the hands-on experience that students get, and that's true not only for our um, on-site courses, but also for our online courses. We have a number of online courses uh, where students are able to experience a, um, a, a laboratory environment. And I will describe uh, two of the mechanisms that we use for our online students to, to obtain that uh, hands-on laboratory experience. So going to the next slide, um, shows the, um, the structure of our master's degree. So as I mentioned, uh, 10 courses need to be completed within five years. Uh, at least seven of those courses must be uh, ECE courses from either the part-time and online program or from the full-time program that's, uh, that's housed in um, Baltimore. Um, you are able to take uh, up to three electives. Those electives uh, typically are chosen from the Applied and Computational Math program or the Applied Physics program or a Computer Science program. There's also opportunities to um, uh, substitute coursework with a independent study where you're working with a instructor over a semester to pursue some research and development topic of mutual interest. And we also have a two semester thesis option that is um, um, completed at the end of the, uh, the program. So uh, for the masters, the thesis would count as your ninth and 10th course. Uh, going to the next slide does illustrate the seven technical focus areas that I mentioned earlier. And as you can see, it, it does span the broad spectrum of areas that are touched by electrical and computer engineering from communications and networking, computer engineering, uh, electronics and solid state. Um, somewhat uh, unique to our program is we have two, two focus areas, one in optics and photonics, um, where we partner with the Applied Phys Physics Program. And then we have a fairly significant uh, RF and microwave uh, engineering curriculum with a, a pretty um, impressive uh, array of instrumentation for, for that coursework. And then finally, our two remaining focus areas are in signal processing and systems and controls. 
The next slide um, describes, in addition to the master's degree, we also have two certificate options uh, if those are better suited for the situation that uh, you might be in. So we have a graduate certificate, which I kind of like to think of as, as like half a master's degree. Um, so uh, five courses need to be completed within three years. At least four of those five courses need to be ECE course courses, and you can take um, uh, one elective. And uh, after completing those those five courses, you would obtain a graduate certificate. We find that um, many of the students who begin in the graduate certificate program um, find that really five courses is not going to be enough for them whenever they they see the, the rich spectrum of courses available to them. And so they end up switching to the master's degree. So uh, if that's the case, typically the courses that were taken to pursue the graduate certificate would then just transfer right over uh, into the master's degree. For students who may have already completed a master's degree in ECE or a uh, related area, we have a post-master's certificate program where uh, six courses are completed within three years. Uh, at least four of those six courses need to be ECE courses with, with uh, uh, up to two electives taken outside of ECE as approved by an advisor. Um, so going to the next slide, uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, for uh, many of our online courses, we have tried to incorporate a laboratory experience. Um, and we um, utilize two methods for um, providing that laboratory experience. Uh, and I will describe both of those in the, in the next two slides. So, so the first method is uh, typically used for our online computer engineering courses, where uh, <clears throat> at the beginning of the semester, we actually uh, mail a development uh, kit to the students that, that may include some type of microprocessor board and ancillary um, sensors and components that the students are then able to use for uh, project work and coursework over the, um, uh, dur the duration of the semester. And our students find that extremely valuable to, to actually do the, the hands-on work very similar to what a laboratory experience would be like uh, on campus in some of our on-campus laboratories. At the end of the semester, then the students mail back the um, development board so that uh, we can use those boards for uh, other students in, in, in upcoming semesters. The second technique that we use for uh, providing that laboratory experience for online courses um, are typically in our courses either in microwave, um, RF and microwaves, or in uh, communications, where um, here, the instrumentation is um, much larger and also um, considerably more expensive, so we're not able to actually uh, physically mail this um, equipment to students, but rather um, we've developed technology where students via a web browser are able to uh, schedule time where they have access to uh, some type of um, laboratory setup where they are able to um, uh, measure and characterize, uh, for example, a microwave circuit, and they can change instrument settings of function generators and oscilloscopes and network analyzers and uh, change tap points for which they're collecting and analyzing data, and students can then download that data and, and analyze it. And that experience we find to be much more enriching than a purely simulation environment because students are able to experience some of the complexities and, and uh, real world realities of uh, actual physical systems that um, uh, that's going to better prepare you for um, your uh, professional um, uh, careers. So um, 
we, we, we find that these two techniques for bringing the laboratory experience to online courses is, is very, very valuable and, and somewhat unique to our program. So uh, going to the next slide, uh, I think this is where I turn it back over to Cheryl. All right, thank you, Brian. So we'd like to take a couple of moments and just talk over the uh, admissions process. Uh, to, if you're interested in uh, joining us for this program, your first step is to submit your online application, and you can do that by visiting this URL right here, ep.jhu.edu backslash apply. Uh, in addition to your academic, your, your online application, you'll need to submit your academic transcripts uh, and your professional resume. The instructions on where to submit all of these documents can actually be found at this uh, URL, it's all listed above the online application form. Brian, can you talk us through the admissions requirements for your program? Yes, I'm happy to. So the uh, the formal requirements are to have had a uh, undergraduate uh, electrical and or computer engineering degree from a ABET accredited institution. But we, we over the years, have had a number of applicants who have uh, entered into our program um, with uh, some other science or engineering degree. So they may have a degree in mathematics or physics or mechanical engineering or computer science. And um, um, we welcome students in who have uh, undergraduate degrees in those areas to apply. Uh, in many cases, those students are required to take uh, maybe one or two preparatory non-graduate courses to get them up to speed in kind of this core fundamental ECE knowledge to uh, prepare them for uh, further graduate study. And we, we find that, that many, many students who, who come from a non-ECE background uh, by completing those one or two courses are able to, um, to uh, excel in the graduate coursework. Um, and um, uh, the, again, the formal requirement is to have a GPA of at least 3.0. And again, we 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 do want to understand um, kind of the the full student experience. And in many cases, um, if you've been out of school, say for a decade or or more, um, your performance as an undergrad may not. Uh, fully represents your ability to succeed in graduate school. So we we certainly are open to receiving applicants uh, that may fall uh, slightly below that, that 3.0 GPA threshold and um, additional pieces of information that can help us are uh, something like letters of recommendation from your employer or other employment experiences or, or even um, explanations of, of why you may have fallen a little below that 3.0 GPA as an undergrad. Um, but um, yeah, so that's basically what we're looking for from our applicants. All right, thank you so much. All right, the uh, typically it takes us four to six weeks to review a student's complete application package. Uh, and we do offer rolling admissions at, at Johns Hopkins for our online and part-time students. So uh, typically after that review process is done is when you'll be uh, issued a decision letter. Uh, because we offer rolling admissions, we do not have necessarily firm application deadlines. So I wanted to share with you some important dates to keep in mind while you're submitting your application. Spring registration actually opens on October the 25th and our spring semester starts on January the 28th. So just keep that in mind uh, as you're, you're completing your application materials. Uh, you know, we definitely, if you're interested in joining us for the spring 2019 semester, we definitely encourage you to submit your materials as soon as possible as, uh, you know, classes do have a, you know, may some classes may fill up so the sooner you can get your materials in and we can um, admit you the sooner you can register for classes all right quick review of next steps so if you're interested in enrolling with us again your first step is to submit your application uh, next to submit your academic transcripts and your professional resume 
quick review of uh, important dates. Spring registration opens October the 25th, and the spring semester starts January the 28th.